Kalonord is dead, Lord Malak. He has failed in his mission. Forgive me. The penalty for failure is death, Admiral Carath. But the failure was Kalos, not yours. You may rise. Shall I hire another bounty hunter, Lord Malak? No mere bounty hunter can stand against a Jedi. I shall not make the same mistake again. My apprentice, Darth Bandon, shall take care of our young Jedi friend. Find Bastila and bring her to me, alive if possible. As you command, Master.
Yes, what's on your mind? I already told you, he betrayed us all. Well, there, there is more to it. I'm, I'm sure you don't want to hear about it. It's just that I don't talk about it very much, okay? I told you about my homeworld, Telos. Four years ago, Saul led the Sith fleet there and demanded its surrender. The planet refused, and Saul proceeded to devastate its entire surface. Millions died. I had a... a a wife and a son on Telos. I thought they would be safe there, but my task force arrived too late to be of much help. We, we didn't have enough medical supplies. The colony was, was burning and the dying were everywhere. I remember holding my wife and screaming for the medics, but th th they didn't come in time. Of course not. How could you? I, I, mean, I had nothing left after that, really. I, I devoted myself to the fleet. Hunting Saul was my only purpose. I, I miss them. And I know killing Saul won't bring them back. And it won't make me happy again, but I... I have to do it. I don't expect you to understand, but I have to pay him back for what he's done. I have to. It's all I have left. No, it's all right. I don't mind. You deserve some kind of, uh, explanation. His name was Dustal, and I don't know what happened to him. The colony was a complete ruin, and we never found any trace of him. I made inquiries and followed the reports from Telos for years, but I stopped. Anyway, I hope that answers your questions. Let's, uh, let's continue with what we were doing. How can I help? I do. I've been trying to come up with the best way to say this for some time, but I suppose I should just come out and say it. The truth is, I have come to depend on you. Not just for the sake of the mission, but for my own sake as well. I am... I'm glad you're with us. You're teasing me. You know very well what I said. Well, yes. Surely that's not so surprising. 
No, I'm not. Why must you make this so difficult for me? Can't you just accept a simple compliment? I see. Is there nothing I can do to make it up to you? I would rather we were friends. I... You know I can't feel that way about you. About any man. It isn't permitted. I am a Jedi. I must resist these temptations. But I still want to consider you a friend. We could... We could never be anything more, though. That... That isn't allowed. I know my manner can be a bit taciturn. I know you must be getting sick of my lectures about the dark side and, and everything else. I spent all my years being hounded by my instructors, being told so often how gifted and important I was until I was sick of it. I remember when I was younger, I used to swear that I would never become as self-absorbed and stodgy as the Jedi Masters. It's ironic, really. Yes, well, there's no need for you to agree so wholeheartedly. Being controlled has kept everyone around me at an arm's length. Even those like yourself who are most in need of my understanding and compassion. Maybe it's time to change that. You deserve to know how much I respect and admire you. I had to tell you how much I care for you. As a friend, of course. Please, it's, it's not allowed. I have to remain true to the Jedi ideal. If this is going to cause a problem, maybe I... maybe I shouldn't have said anything. Well, that was not nearly so difficult as I feared. Thank you for hearing me out. I feel... I feel much better. But enough soul-searching for now. We should probably continue on with our mission. Statement. HK-1 
is ready to serve, Master. Affirmative. Request. I only ask that you be o- No! No! What are you doing, Master? That is my motor core! Stop! Ah! Supplication. Perhaps it would be best if you desisted your efforts for the moment, me- I mean, Master. This seems to be going nowhere. As you desire, Master. I cannot help but claim a small amount of relief. Signing off. Yeah, what do you want? I was one of the best youth warriors in the clan Ordo in my time. No one before me had mastered the power of our basilisk war droids as quickly as I had. Except Mandalore himself, of course. In those days, we were sweeping across the Outer Rim, destroying all who fought us. Young Mandalores would prove themselves in real combat with unknown opponents above a thousand worlds. Each brought back stories of his achievements. I remember it well, orbiting high above a placid world, its defenses just stirring. As was tradition, I would go ahead of the first wave to find enemies in the thickest fighting. I remember sitting there in my armor, linked directly with a basilisk thrumming beneath me, my heart racing with fear of the coming battle. Every new warrior has to fear to understand how to beat it. You must know that. The doors opened in front of me, and the air was sucked out of the drop bay, scattering crystals of frozen vapor across my path. I can't describe what it feels like to look directly down at a world, falling continuously as you circle it, with barely 15 centimeters of armor plate protecting you. When the magnetic locks disengaged on my droid, I plunged out of the drop bay towards the battle that waited below. The exhilaration. The euphoria I felt as I streaked into the atmosphere, dodging self-guided projectiles and beam weapons, was unmatched. An 80-kilometer plunge through the atmosphere, dodging and weaving, the outside of my armor glowing like the sun with the heat of re-entry. And with barely 30 meters to spare, I twisted and skimmed the surface, firing at the giant beam generators that were in my path. The explosion from that sent shock waves that leveled the entire complex around it. It was the moment of my life. I'll never forget those times. But things are different now. We can't go on fighting the way we did. There are too few of us left now. But I really don't want to talk about this anymore. I trust I've satisfied your curiosity for now. Is there something else you want to know? <laughs> Stimulants make a warrior out of even the weakest human. Here's a speed-boosting stimulant to help you get quicker. There anything else you need? Your choice. I'm here. Hey there. What can I do for you? Don't worry. I won't let the search for Griff get in the way of what we're doing. Let's just get back to the task at hand. Is there anything else I can help you with? Okay, have it your way. How may I be of assistance to you, Padawan? What is it you would like to speak to me about? Well... I suppose I have not talked very much about the Jedi I met back home. They, all of them, were so very invigorating. They were so very alive. So full of hope and energy and zeal. In retrospect, I can see it was a little bit tragic. Well, yes. These Jedi were going to fight the Mandalorians just after they had invaded. Many of those Jedi perished in the fighting. But to us, they seemed invincible. Especially their leader, who they talked about all the time. Paragons of light and justice sweeping away all iniquity before them. It was like looking at gods.
I know that. I was using poetic license. But those Jedi, they were enthralling. Everyone wanted just to touch them. Some people thought it would bring them luck. Not that the peace they brought lasted very long. The Jedi left. The people grew complacent. Those who had been wronged saw their chance at revenge. And so the cycle continues. The oppressed become the new generation of oppressors. The human oppressed, that is. The non-humans were never treated well in any case. We felt the brunt of both administrations. Of course it was. They took their frustrations and hate out on us because the people they wanted had already fled or were too well protected. But no one looks out for the injustices we suffered. Oh, no. But... But I am sorry. I should not have outbursts like that. Don't you see? The very fact I mentioned it means it has its influence. Anger can lead to the dark side, and I must be ever careful that I do not fall back into those ways. I... I thank you for your support. My outburst was uncalled for, but you did not lash back at me. You are a much better Jedi than I, it would seem. But let us not speak more of this now. We should continue on our journey. Perhaps later we will talk again. something on your mind, do you? You got yourself a fast little ship? <laughs> I'd forgot what engine sounded like. The closest thing to that on Kashyyyk is an uller in mating season. Oh, frightful. Or it could be for the free food. What's the gunk that comes out of a synthesizer on this bucket anyway? Do you never clean the darn thing? I'm old, damn it. I'm allowed to be enigmatic when I want to be. And don't you go telling me otherwise. You know, you remind me of someone else I knew ages ago. Pleasant enough fellow, great destiny, all of that. Breath like a bantha. Oh, <laughs> very funny. Is it my fault that some people are so easily annoyed? They're like impatient little children with blasters. Anyway, uh, where was I? Oh, yes, Andor Vex was his name. The Force swirled around him like a hurricane. That's how great his destiny was. No, you wouldn't have. Sometimes swirling force is just swirling force. It gets us old Jedis excited at our age, so we go, Ooh, destiny! Well, it turned out that poor Andor believed a wee bit too much in the infallibility of that destiny. That overconfidence turned out to be his downfall. I don't know. Are you overconfident? I hadn't noticed. Even if I had, I would never comment on it. We're talking about Andor, remember? Let's see. Oh yes, Andor's downfall. I was pretty young myself when it happened. At the time, I thought that Andor's destiny couldn't be more boring. Well, let's just say that I was a strapping young lad with a full head of hair, and Coruscant was a small town with a well. <laughs> I was just about to abandon Andor to whatever the Force intended for him when his ship was overtaken by a Dimian warship. Now, you've probably never heard of the Dimians, but at the time they were a nasty lot led by a nastier overlord named Krat. Tall fellow, 
big teeth. Krat has us hauled onto the bridge of his ship for questioning, and that's when I knew that Andor's destiny was at hand. Of course he did. Haven't you been listening? It was not in the way you'd probably expect, though. Well, Andor decides that his destiny makes him invulnerable and starts making all sorts of demands. Free me now. I'm not answering questions. Blah, blah, blah. Don't you know who I am? Krat decides he's had enough and begins crushing Andor's neck. I told the boy he should have kept his mouth shut. I think he agreed, too. Those could have just been gurgling noises. No, oh, well, anyway. Finally, Krat has enough of Andor and tosses him aside into this giant energy intake shaft. Andor gets sucked in and starts bouncing around, <laughs> screaming. <laughs> Maybe Andor hit something sensitive on the way down or just didn't agree with the reactor core. Next thing I know, all the ship's alarms are ringing. Everyone panics and I run, barely making it to the ship in time before the explosion. Krat dies horribly, and the Dimians never quite recovered. Changed the political course of the entire sector for centuries to come. I'd call that quite a destiny, wouldn't you? What, are you kidding? What are the odds of that happening anyway? A billion to one? You should do so well as to be sucked into the engine of some evil Sith Lord, you know. Andor was a hero, sort of. Anyway, go on. My throat is dry and you're making me cranky. Shoo!